In this video we're going to add and subtract rational expressions that have the same denominator. So here our example is 1, these two uh, examples 2, we look at these two examples, examples 3, and um, examples 4. Now beware, on examples 3 we'll have to factor by pulling out a negative 1. Examples 4 we'll have to put parentheses around the top of the fractions on the right, okay? So these are examples three and four where you've got real common errors here. So you've got to make sure we see these, okay? So we'll start with example one, um, five tenths minus 13 tenths. Now I'm sure you all know the answer. But I just want to make one quick point on this. When we are subtracting fractions, the whole trick is to make sure that your bottoms are the same. In this case, they are the same. So, I mean, my point is this. You don't do... You don't put that in lowest terms because, look, 5 tenths in lowest terms, 5 to 5 goes once, 5 to 10 goes twice, and that's a half. So you don't want a half. Okay, I know almost always we say, you know, we want the fractions in lowest terms. Well, not when we're adding or subtracting because we're adding or subtracting. Our main goal is to make sure the bottoms are the same because then we can add or subtract the tops. So I just want that to be clear that we don't cross cancel here. So in any case, you end up with... Um, is that negative um, 8 tenths, $5, take away $13, negative 8. And, of course, if you cross cancel, 2 to that goes 4 times, 2 to that goes 5 times, and we have negative 4 fifths. So we can see from this example that we don't cross cancel at the beginning, but we may cross cancel at the end to put the answer in lowest terms, okay? So at the beginning, we need the bottoms at the same. At the end, we need the answer in lowest terms. So just like this example here, the question is, well, should I cross-cancel these x's? I have uh, 2x over x. Is it a good idea to cross-cancel x's and get 2 over 1 here? Well, I'm subtracting fractions, and my main goal is to make sure the bottoms are the same. So that's not a good idea at all. You want to leave this alone because the bottoms are the same. And now your answer is simply, you know, 2x is the first one, minus 3, and all over the same bottom x. And that's the answer. Because 2x minus 3, these are obviously not like terms, so we cannot um, simplify them any further. So just this is the answer, 2x minus 3 over x, okay? And that's similar to, to this first example. You could have written this first example as 5 minus 13 over 10. That makes negative 8, see? So it's the first uh, numerator minus the second numerator over the common denominator, okay? Examples 2, um, 5 minus 9 over 4, 5 over 4x minus 9 over 4x. Straight away, we can see that the bottoms are the same. And now this time, we don't just have, you know, 4 or x or whatever, we have 4x. Now, the thing about it is 4x is a number. It's the same, and it's the same number as this number over here. For example, for example, if x was, say, 10, then 4x would simply be 40, wouldn't it? 4 times 10. So this problem would read, in fact, 5 over 4x would be 5 over 40 minus 9 over 40. And you would simply write, okay, that's 5 minus 9 all over 40, and then you would get the answer, okay? So it's the same with this guy. We would, um, we just go, okay, this has got to be 5 minus 9 over 4x. Let's write that step down just for fun. And now, of course, we can, these are like terms. These are just numbers. 5 minus 9 gives negative 4. So I have negative 4 over 4x. Now, at this point, this is my answer. And I can simplify my answer by putting it in lowest terms. So put that in lowest terms. What do you get when this is in lowest terms? Well, we have multiplication on the bottom, so we can cross cancel here. 4 into 4 goes once, 4 into 4 goes once. And this is negative 1 over 1 times x, or negative 1 over x. Does that make sense? So don't forget to put your 1s here. The answer is not negative x. This would be correct if you got the, incorrect if you got that. The answer is negative 1 over x, or ne the negative in line with the fraction bar is the perfect way to write it. It's negative 1 over x, with the negative in line with the fraction bar. Okay, so um, how about this guy here? 4 over x plus 2 plus x minus 2 over x plus 2. Can you do this? 
This time, we actually have an addition on the bottom, but that's okay. That's okay, because the thing about it is, both of these fractions have the same denominator, okay? And just once again, just for example, for example, if x happened to be the number, I don't know, 5, let's say, then this would be x plus 2, x plus 2 would be, you know, 5 plus 2, x plus 2 would be 7. So this problem would read, in fact, 4 over 7, you know, plus whatever that is, over 7, okay? So you would have the same bottom. Okay, this, if x is 5, of course, this top would be 5 minus 2, it would be 3, in fact. But in any case, so what we have is, uh, and of course, by the way, this is interesting, that would be 7 over 7, which is 1. Okay, anyway, interesting answer. But in this case, the bottoms are the same. And if you like, best thing to do is, you know, put parentheses around them, just so you can see that it's its own quantity. We should have put parentheses around this as well, just so we can see it properly. And if the bottoms are the same, you can simply add the tops. So we just go 4 plus, and put parentheses around the tops as well. You know, it's 4 plus x minus 2, plus x minus 2. Just to show that this, all of this is include, is together, in a way. All over x uh, plus 2, x minus 2. And now if I add like terms on the top, I simply get x, and now 4 minus 2 is plus 2, x plus 2 all over x plus 2 on the bottom, right? And now what does this make? Well, if you put parentheses around the top and the bottom, you can see that these are the same number, right? x plus 2 over x plus 2. They're the same factor. So this and this goes once, this and this goes once, and we simply get 1 over 1, which of course is 1, right? The answer is 1. And it's interesting that when we substituted 5 in for x into this example, we calculated the answer to be 1. And that the 5 is not special. If you let x equal to 23.7, you would s still find that the answer here is 1. If you let x equal to 302, this answer would still be 1. Because you always end up with x plus 2 over x plus 2, and these guys cross cancel and give 1s. So if x was 302, that would be 304 over 304, and the answer would still be, still be 1. Anyway, so examples 3. 5 over x minus 5 minus x over x minus 5. Take the first step. The bottoms are the same. Okay, the bottoms are the same. What will the tops look like? Well, you'll have 5 minus x all over the same bottom of x minus 5, right? Now, does this look familiar? A positive x here, a negative x here. A positive 5 here, a negative 5 here. At this point, when you see that, you should suspect that these guys are opposites. Okay? And the best thing to do is to pull out a negative 1. So for some of some examples in, in this set, you may need to factor out a negative 1. And you've got to be familiar with, you know, when you think you might need to do it. Well, anytime you've got something minus x, you know, that's a possibility for factoring, needing to factor out a negative 1. But in any case, if I pull out a negative 1, you go negative 1 times what gives positive 5. Negative 1 times negative 5, right? Negative 1 times what gives a negative x? Negative 1 times positive x, right? And don't be afraid to check that. Negative 1 times negative 5, positive 5. Negative 1 times positive x, negative x, right? And of course, this thing at the top can be written. Um, sorry, just take that out. Whoops. This thing at the top can simply be written, you know, negative 1 times. And instead of negative 5 plus x, you could write positive x, then minus 5, right? And it's all over this, this, this bottom, which of course is x minus 5. You have x minus 5 on the bottom, okay? So just put parentheses around this, and now you can cross cancel, can't you? So the x minus 5's cross cancel, and I have negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1, all over positive 1. So the answer is simply 1 over 1 gives 1, 
Negative over positive gives a negative. So the answer is negative 1, right? So press pause and do this example. x squared over 3 minus x squared minus 3 over 3 minus x squared. Okay, now I'll do it. Um, the thing about this is you don't need to use the difference of squares factoring method because the bottoms are the same, 3 minus x squared. That means we can subtract the tops, x squared minus 3, all over 3 minus x squared. Now, at this point, you can see you have a positive x squared and a, on the top and a negative x squared on the bottom. You have a positive 3 here and a negative 3 up here. So the top and bottom are opposites. Okay, they're, they're opposite signs on each term. So we should suspect that what you should do now is actually factor out a negative 1, and that is what that would be a good way to do it. Because when you factor out a negative 1, let's take the bottom. You could factor out a negative 1 from the top either if you like. It doesn't matter. But I usually work on this one. I don't know why. Just, just because I've done it. I guess if I, if I just show you one method, it's less to remember. That's usually a good idea. Anyway, negative 1 times what gives positive 3? Negative 1 times negative 3, right? Negative 1 times what gives negative x squared? Negative 1 times what would it be positive x squared, right? Now check that. Negative 1 times negative 3, positive 3. Negative 1 times positive x squared? negative x squared, right? And this negative 3 plus x squared can be written as um, positive x squared minus 3, see? So it's negative 1 times positive x squared minus 3, and the top stays the same. The top of the fraction is just x squared minus 3, right? So the whole fraction becomes this. And now I can cross cancel common factors. This and this goes once, this and this goes once. So I didn't need to factor with a difference of squares here or, or any other type of method because they're both the same anyway. They just cross cancel and so the fraction because they're the same. So the fraction is just one over and negative one times one is negative one. And now we know that positive over negative gives a negative number and one over one gives one. So once again, the answer to this is negative one. Okay. Example is number four. Um, this time, for some reason, and um, let's see if we can understand why. But the, the when we do this, okay, we have the same bottom of x minus three. So we, you know, we combine the tops. We have the same bottom, so we can combine the tops. And we go 4 minus 7 minus x. Wrong. This is wrong, wrong, wrong. What's wrong? Big mistake here. Big mistake. Common error. The problem is we're supposed to put parentheses around the top of this fraction and then subtract all of it. But the question is why? Because if we don't understand why we need parentheses there, then we're not going to remember it. You only remember things that you understand, right? Any idea? Well, you could, you could think about it in one sense. As part of the language of algebra, okay, this 7 minus x is on top of this fraction. So the whole thing is, you know, on the top of this fraction. And then when this subtraction is in line with the fraction bar, it's saying subtract the whole top of the fraction, not just the 7, but the whole thing. Okay, that's one way to understand it. And then the other, yeah. But, the, but I mean, if you want to actually plug a number in there, I mean, if you had, um, let's say, if, for example, if x was equal to uh, the number 2, okay, uh, then we would have 7 minus 2 over, you know, 2 minus 3 or whatever. Let's call it 7 minus 2 over, over something. Well, let's call it, yeah, I guess we'll have to, nah. I guess we'll just have to call it, you know, 2 minus, we're going to have to call that negative 1, I guess, whatever. Anyway, but the point is, let's say that's on the top of the fraction, and you subtract this fraction, okay? Do you go negative 7, then minus 2 over negative 1, or do you go negative, with parentheses, 7 minus 2 over negative 1? Okay, so that's the question. Is it this way, or is it this way? Which way is it?
Now, we know that 7 minus 2, of course, is 5, okay? And this negative goes there, so we have negative 5 over negative 1, which is positive 5. So positive 5 is the answer. If I try to calculate this without the parentheses, what I get is negative 7 minus 2, negative 9 over negative 1, which gives me positive 9, okay? Incorrect answer. I was looking for positive 5. We know positive 5 is correct. Okay. Now, if I do this way and put parentheses around the 7 minus 2, I can calculate 7 minus 2 to be the number 5, and this negative sign stays there, doesn't it? Because 7 minus 2 just became 5. Now, of course, I have negative 5 over negative 1, and this is positive 5. So this way is correct. This way is not correct. So when I put the parentheses in there, it all worked out. When I left the parentheses off, it did not. Does that make sense? When we subtract fractions like this, we have to put parentheses around the top of the fraction. Okay? And we get this. And so the whole point of putting parentheses there is that now we have 4 minus this. Now remember, this is like a bag, one bag of something. So 4 minus one of these means I multiply a negative 1 in here and I actually get 4, now negative 1 times 7 is minus 7, negative 1 times negative x is plus x, and that's all over x minus 3, and now if I add like terms, I have a positive x, and now 4 minus 7 is negative 3, so I have x minus 3 over x minus 3, and that equals, just put parentheses around the top and bottom, and they're the same thing, so they cross cancel, and we have 1 over 1, and that's 1, okay? So press pause and do this example. Okay, press pause and do this. Okay, now I'll do it. Um, there's a subtraction on this guy, and x plus 11 is all over this fraction bar, and it's saying subtract this whole fraction, meaning subtract the whole of the top, not just the x, but the whole of the top, okay? So we need to put parentheses around that. So, and we have the same bottom, the same bottom is x minus 7. So our top is 18 minus, in parentheses, x plus 11, all over x minus 7 on the bottom. And now, once again, I'm subtracting a bag of quantities being added. It's one bag, so take away one of these means multiply negative 1 in here and here. Okay, so this top is simply 18, and now negative 1 times x is minus 1x, negative 1 times 11 is minus 11, and it's all over x minus 7, and um, negative x is, negative 1x is just negative x, 18 minus 11 is plus 7, so I have negative x plus 7 over x minus 7, and the trick is, we have opposites, negative x, positive x, positive 7, negative 7, opposites on the top and bottom. So we should suspect that at this point you need to pull out a negative 1, and that's a good idea. If I pull a negative, factor out a negative 1 from the top, okay, negative 1 times what gives negative x? Positive x, isn't it? Negative 1 times what gives me this positive 7? negative 1 times negative 7, right? See, negative 1 times x is negative x, negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. So I can factor a negative 1 from the top, and I get negative 1 times x minus 7 all over x minus 7 on the bottom. Now I can cross-cancel common factors, and I simply have negative 1 times 1, negative 1 over 1. So the answer, of course, is simply negative 1 again. The answer is just negative 1. Okay.